Good evening, good evening. Welcome to Sacred Space. Thank you for spending time with me here. I am delighted, delighted, delighted to spend a little bit of pick-me-up time with you. We call this an inspiration circle because it's not meant to do more than just lift you up a little bit. Just remind you that you're in the middle of the week and give you a chance to pause for a minute and just notice uh, that you have gotten halfway through. You got to, to hump day and kind of bring yourself back to whatever your intention is for this week. So before we get started, I want to invite you to notice the magic, to really recognize that something phenomenal is happening in the world, that we have for a very long time known that we're energy beings, that we are at our core, There's we're energy. We appear as matter, but when, when you get down to the smallest uh, signatures that we can find right now, we are all part of the same energy field. Science has told us that. So what is fascinating to me is that we are porting ourselves into each other's sacred space right now. Like you are in my dining room right here with me. I can see all your faces. You literally physically are on this screen in my space. And I am in your space, wherever you are, my presence is in your space. And not just the intimacy of that, that we invite each other into this space and connect through this energy field is a really powerful thing for us to attach our intentions to. Because we can kind of separate out and pretend it's nothing. It's just where we are in the 21st century. But it's so much more than nothing, isn't it? It's so much more. It is It is a real miracle, first of all. It's a miracle that we're able to do this. And it's pretty darn incredible to realize that we actually are connected in a different way than if we were in the same space. So I want to invite you to take a moment before we begin and to connect to look at each screen and to be intentional about your invitation in and also to be intentional about your visit out that you allow yourself to connect with each person here and recognize how deep this connection can be as we get to know each other that we create that third thing together that is the energy of the wholeness we are because we take the time to look in each other's eyes and to recognize the gift. And we are East Coast, West Coast, um, all the way up Pacific Northwest, all the way down to Australia today and all over Colorado, obviously. So it's a pretty widespread web that we're connected to. And what a great gift. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. As you know, our, our month is a focus on self-care, um, looking at the tools that we have and looking really at our journey to ourself. We are still in the dreaming time. We have not gotten to the spring equinox yet. And even though the days are starting to get longer, it's still cold out there in the morning. We still are not quite ready to jump out of bed. In another month or so, when the sun is up early and it starts to get warm, you're going to notice that your body wants to get out of bed and start things because the, the sun will be stronger and it will pull us in our natural rhythm. But right now we're still in the dreaming time. We've just blessed the seeds of whatever is ahead for us. And we are still dreaming our last dreams that will help us to move forward, help us to understand what, what the field of consciousness is offering us versus what we are putting into the field of consciousness. And this is a really important thing to consider because there is a time when we are actively creating. But the dreaming is an invitation to receive the seed of immaculate conception. 
to allow ourselves to receive from that divine wisdom, that divine field, what is ours to do? What is the inspiration? So I just invite you into that awareness as we start. And tonight's subject is serenity. And so serenity, the definition of serenity is really easy. It's to be calm, to be content, and to be untroubled. And the calm and content we can usually manage, right? Calm, I can make myself calm. I have the tools to calm myself. And the content, I can, I can be content, I have coffee. Coffee will content me for some period of time, always. Makes me feel well cared for. When I was a little girl, a little side note, when I was a little girl, my dad used to make me coffee with this much coffee and this much cream and sugar. And so I have, there's something very comforting to me. We all have that, right? We all have something that comforts us. I can find contentment in hot chocolate or coffee or whatever it is that content that makes you content. You know, it could be riding your bicycle. Maybe your contentment habits are a little bit healthier than mine. The untroubled part is different. The big piece that I notice around serenity is it is the ability to become for some period of time untroubled. So uh, there is a prayer that you have all heard. It's called the serenity prayer. And you've all heard it and you're all familiar with it. It's written in very Christian text. And I want to honor that. I want to remind all of you that this is interfaith space, which means we have people from all different kinds of spiritual backgrounds here. So I want to use the serenity prayer tonight to talk about being untroubled. And I want to read it to you two ways. I want to read it to you in its original form for those of you who have a deep appreciation for the, the Christian form of looking at things. And then I want to read it to you in an adjusted form for those who might have uh, wounding from their from previous uh, religious interaction or who simply don't relate to Christianity but relate to something else. But I want you to think about as I read this, and I'll read one, pause for a breath and read it again. I want you to think about the words and the, the words how the words strike you around being untroubled, really letting the words sink in and untrouble you. So I'll read it first in its original form. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the path to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. And for those who's, who don't relate to those words, I'd like to read it a little differently. Spirit, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardship as the path to peace. Taking this world as it is, not as I would have it. And trusting all things are in divine order. If I simply surrender my worries to the oneness. That I may be reasonably happy in this life and all lives in all other times and dimensions. And so it is. So to be untroubled, to allow ourselves to be untroubled is to recognize what we can change and not change, 
in this moment? What is ruminating in there for you that you really can't fix today, right now? Maybe you can fix it tomorrow or maybe in a month or maybe on payday or any other number of things. But right now, what is resting and troubling you that you can pull out and set aside? Because it's wisdom to do so. What can you release? And it takes courage to do this, right? It takes courage to set it down because we're afraid if we don't, if we don't hold on to it, we might lose track of it. We might not take care of it. Something might happen to us. We might not be safe. Whatever that is, someone we love might not be safe. It takes courage, commitment, dedication. Last week, we talked about uh, how we think of the word discipline as punishment, but it's a root. It comes from the same root word as disciple. And when you disciple to someone, it means that you follow them, that you learn from them. We can disciple our thoughts to our primary intentions. We can get our thoughts to follow the lead that we give them. And part of that lead is to set down what doesn't serve us, what we cannot fix, and to be courageous enough to rest and center, to come to peace across all times and dimensions, to give ourselves the moments of rest, the break, the serenity that will allow us to replenish so that when there are things that we actually need to take care of, we can, we have the energy to move forward. It's wisdom to notice what the things are that you can set down and courage to set them down. So no matter how you hear this prayer, there's the second half of it. We've all heard the, the you know, God grant me the serenity part. But the second part, which is really to trust in divine order, trust in the order of life, to surrender into that order and allow peace to come to you across all times and dimensions in whatever ways you connect with the divine, to really give yourself permission to have that as valuable. So I want to invite you to close your eyes for a moment. And I would like to invite you to breathe. And I know that you're breathing, but I want you to actually notice that you're breathing. You don't have to change how you breathe. Just breathe normally. Our perspective is often that we breathe from the inside out. What if in this moment, rather than breathing, you are breathed? What if that which is holy, however you perceive it, is breathing you? And with each breath in, you are brought to peace. And with each breath out, whatever is not serving your peace is simply taken. Removed by the holy. And as you breathe in again, more light, more peace, more comfort, more ease, being breathed by that which is all. Simply allowing ourselves. Last week, I invited you to touch something in your surrounding. Pick something, just reach out, whatever is at your hands, reach. Just notice it, place your hands on it. Touch and feel what is there. And what if in this moment, rather than touching, you are touched? Allow yourself to connect to the universe to connect with that which is holy, touching you, experiencing you, filling your form with love 
and removing whatever is unnecessary. Can you feel yourself being touched? Allow yourself to hear. You notice the sounds around you. Even if all you hear is your own breath, maybe you hear your heartbeat, the sound of a child in the room, the heat running, the refrigerator running, whatever it is, hear it, notice it, be present to it. And what if in this moment you are heard? What if in this moment the deepest desires of your heart are heard by the holy, the ones that don't have words, the desires that spill forth and never quite seem totally said because they run so deep through all the levels of who you are that there really aren't words? What if in this moment, you simply let yourself be heard? I want to invite you to gently open your eyes, but stay in your calm and serene place. And as you open your eyes, see, notice what calls your attention. Whatever it is that calls your attention, it's simply a reflection of the divine. It's another face of the holy. And you are seen by that face in the same way that you see it. Whether it's a human face or an item, something around you, a work of art, every bit of it is divine energy holding a simple form. The divine, the eyes of the divine are around you all the time. Some of us were taught to be afraid of that. God is watching you. Be careful. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the comforting, loving, calm, healing presence of the holy that sees you, sees the beauty of you, sees the expression of you, sees the gift you are in the world, sees all the ways that you move with grace and resilience. You are breathed, you are touched, you are held, you are seen and you are heard. You are never, ever alone. And the courage that it takes to let go of your troubles comes when you surrender into this place of connection. To allow yourself moments where you are untroubled and at peace across this time and all dimensions of time and all the expressions of you that exist all the places that they do. So take just a moment in the quiet and allow yourself to be rather than do. When you feel ready, take a nice deep breath in. Fill your lungs all the way until you can feel your rib cage expand and then clear completely. 
and gently open your eyes. The work that we do in this sacred space is quick work because it's designed to be work that you can take into every single day of your life, that you can call on in the moments when life is not as easy as you might like it to be, or when you need to center and calm so that you can help someone else, because we need each other right now. There are many challenges that we're facing in our life. To be breathed is different to breathe. To allow the holy to breathe you is an entirely different experience. To reach out and allow the holy to touch you through all of its manifest forms, through the skin, through the, the cloth on your skin, allows you to actually have the arms of the holy around you when you need it. Because what is this? It's the holy manifest in this form. That's all that it is. To be seen when you feel invisible, to be heard in the deepest place in your heart by the oneness, by the soul soup that we all are together. A powerful, powerful thing. I'm grateful for your presence here. Everybody in the room is invent in invited to stay for the afterglow, our little time of community conversation. And if you need to go, Thank you so much for your presence in this space. I'm so grateful for you, love you, send you all kinds of love, and look forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs>